Women Matters in May 2022. We intended last time to continue with the topic intuition. Let's see if we will stick to it. First, uh, the check in round. And I would say, as always, who came in first? Imagine who that is. I think oh. the Austrians are very, very precise. <laughs> No, it's just I can't stop being right on time, like the uh, white bunny in Alice in Wonderland. I have to be on time. I have to be on time. And no matter how late I start, I'm always on time. But it's it's convenient. Um, yeah, I sort of plunged into Ken Wilber's sex, ecology, and spirituality again because I was uh, somebody in the German group told me that he wrote about the soul and I couldn't remember anything. And then I so I started again. And of course, then I got to the chapter about uh, spirit, Geist in capital letters. And the fact that he uses 20 pages for one footnote. And then you know everything about Buddhism. So he is really amazing. And I sort of forgot how amazing he is. And on the other hand, he always promises two more books, a trilogy of this. And they never got written, the, the second one, about man and woman, the relationship of man and woman. He didn't dare, obviously, to write that. And the third one is also about ecology and he didn't write that either. So I'm actually sorry that he didn't and he probably won't write it. But I still recommend to everybody to read sex, ecology and spirituality. It really is something that got me moving at that time, 20 years ago. And now I'm really humble about what he really did at, with that one book. Okay, I pass on to Gertraud. She was second. Yeah, I missed out the last part. I'm Gertraud from Germany. Um, and I kind of, yeah, <laughs> I didn't make it to the to our last call. Um, well, I'm, I'm pretty busy at the moment. There is a lot of things wrapping up. There's, um, yeah, like my training and my, um, and uh, something I'm working in a company with and new things opening up. And uh, yeah, I'm an expecting grandmother with two new babies coming in July and August, it's really getting close. So I'm pretty busy at the moment, but pretty happy. So I don't have time to read books. So, uh, but I, I noticed it and I will get back to that. So I pass on to Hanali. Hello, everyone. Um Yes, it's also been a very active time for me and I'm still simmering in my consciousness about the event I attended online Friday a week ago of the IDG summit in Sweden, uh, Inner Development Goals. And it was just extraordinary to be part of such an event where they launched the IDGs. That's the inner journey, not about an outer journey. And yeah, it was just wonderful to be present with the Presenting Institute again after so many years, because I've done it six years ago. And yeah, and seeing Otto again and the likes was really wonderful, Otto Sharma. And also other, the, the event was so beautifully curated, it was so elegant. And the way they did the, the physical and the online events was just wonderful. So it was all in all just an amazing, 
energy to be in and to be with like-minded and like-hearted people. So I'm still simmering in that. And I have to say that that is currently still, it's like a wave that I'm currently on. So even when I'm also very active currently, um, it's, it's wonderful to be part of something like that, that then takes you forward. And I'm complete and I'll pass on to Victoria, if she's back yet. Hello. <laughs> um, great to see you all again. Um, yesterday, I had a wonderful day, thanks to Beatrice and some other people. Um, it was Mother's Day and Beatrice sent me um, flowers. Oh, that's blurry. They're very beautiful, so they're worth seeing. Um, let's see if I can get, is that better? Um, can you see the flowers? Did you see them? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and then that was already a surprise. And then in the middle of the afternoon, suddenly there was a knock at the door and she sent me um, a, a Moomin mug and, a, and Moomin socks. I don't know if you know that. I think they're called Moomi in, um, in it's, it's, it's a, um, I can't explain it really, but they're, they look like this. There, it was, it started as a, um, as a, it started as a, um, a comic strip in Europe in the, I think in like the 20s or 30s. Um, my mother grew up on, um, my grandfather always reading the, the comics. They were stated in the United States as well. She's a, she was a, um, a Swedish woman living in Finland and, um, Anyway, so I grew up on the Moomin books, um, lots of characters, and then raised Beatrice <laughs> with the Moomins. So it became kind of like, it's kind of a family tradition and um, they're really delightful. Um, love. So um, Moomin Mama is the mama of the Moomin family and um, she's always carrying a handbag. And um, anyway, yeah, you probably know who I'm talking about. So that was a great surprise. There was a knock at the door and there was a Moomin mug and four pairs of Moomin socks, one for each season of the year. So even though Beatrice is far away and I miss her, um, it was a very nice Mother's Day. And um, there was a huge feast in the morning at the church. So we went to that. And then, um, and then last night, um, a friend invited me out um, for dinner. And so we had a very nice evening. So um, yeah, so it's all about food and and socks and gifts. Um, so that's pretty much my check-in for the moment. So it's uh, lots of lots of advantages to being a mother. And I pass to my daughter. Hi. Um, was the connection a little spotty when my mother was talking for everybody? Okay. Mama, your connection's a little spotty. I wasn't sure if it was on my end or not. We I, I heard we heard you, but it was a little maybe she, you wobbly. should turn off the camera uh victoria or just yeah mm -hmm. or turn the wi-fi on and off or something um hi i'm here <laughs> um let's see what's going on um i've i've had i'm having a series of visitors at the moment um uh, uh my partner galen is is visiting uh He's in the halfway through his a 10 day visit. Um, I had a friend, uh, Nancy, who uh, has been living in Rhode Island for the last nine months, I think. Um, and she's about to go back to North Carolina. So while she's relatively close, she wanted to come and have a little New York day. So she came and visited, um, was it yesterday or the day before? Um, she uh wanted to go see broadway so we went to see wicked which i've i've listened to the music before but i've never seen it um it is a, a reinterpretation of of uh, the 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 wicked witch of the west from the wizard of oz and the good witch uh, galinda and it's it's basically the prequel to the wizard of oz and um, it's it's their childhood and them the growing up together, knowing each other, and 
and it actually kind of puts a twist on on that story that the wicked witch is actually not wicked but um was made to be made by by the you know the government and and you know and, and the outside world made to look evil um and be kind of the scapegoat for the, everything that was going bad in, in the world um so it's interesting <laughs> i like it i kind of want to watch the wizard of oz now to, to see if i can reconcile the stories and if it makes sense obviously wicked was written you know after the wizard of oz but um so that was fun it was fun to go to broadway and um we spent spent the day together and um, had good food and, you know, just hung out and caught up because we haven't seen each other in a long time. Um, and then coming up, I have another friend visiting from LA, um, in a bit, um, uh, Katie, she's coming for work. Um, so she won't be staying with me, but hopefully we'll get some time together. Um, and then after that, hopefully, uh, my mother and Alfred should be coming to New York because I am finally getting to graduate. Um, <laughs> I finished my degree in 2020, but we never had a ceremony because um, because of the pandemic. So uh, NYU had promised that we would have an in-person ceremony at some point, and I guess now is the time. So they're doing graduation for the classes of 2020 and 2021 are going to be combined. Um, and there's a, one giant ceremony at Yankee Stadium for the for all of NYU schools um, for those years, those classes. And then the next day, there's going to be a smaller ceremony for my school specifically within NYU. Um, so that's exciting. That's coming up. <laughs> I wonder. I, I'm curious to see how I feel and how I feel afterwards because I think even though I finished, I never really felt closure. Um, about that or 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 the, the the accomplishment didn't feel as real and i think maybe something about participating in that ritual and that celebration and being in person that will really kind of close close that up so um i'm looking forward to that and yeah i'm i'm just figuring things out i have a couple new employment things and um yeah <laughs> There's been a lot of drama lately. I've talked about it before. I'm finding my way out from the from the negative, negative uh, work situations and trying to find positive work situations and figure out what's next for me here in New York. And also what I want to do in the summer. I turned 30 this summer. Um, so but I but I also have this job right now that is supposed to be year round. So it looks like I won't have vacation time. <laughs> which is ironic um so i don't know i'm 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 seeing what i can do and how i can celebrate what i can do this summer so that's what's on my mind currently um yeah it's beautiful here it's been raining for the past three days so it's really lovely to have the sun out again and warm weather and not dreary and that's my check-in for the moment i'm in new york for the people who watch the recordings yeah <clears throat> you said all the time and why you so uh, maybe who who knows something about America knows that that is in New York, you know. Um, yeah, so I first start with saying what's up in here. I had a very interesting week uh, last Sunday, not this one, the other one. My cat had another stroke and she couldn't walk anymore. She leaned on the side and the one, uh, the right the right side was um, paralyzed and she couldn't walk. Then I had um, a session with a medium and she invoked the spirit healer. And right after the session, the cat could walk. And she also ate before she didn't eat, uh, uh, only very little. And she ate uh, two little tins and the next day still, she always walked and she continued to walk until let's say the other day and for some days now she doesn't eat and she's lying down like completely like this and awaiting her end but um, for me it was so astonishing this moment right after the session that she could walk again you know you hear these things that Jesus has done the miracles and everything, and you just think, well, maybe, maybe not. And then you see it with your own eyes that these things 
actually might really be real. And that she is now um, about to die. I think it was is her time. She is 19 and two months. So it's, but the miracle has, has happened. And that left me really, how can I say, surprised, hopeful, astonished. Um, Let's say shaken. Some, you were what? shaken, shaken. Shaken in some way, but, but in a, right afterwards you were really shaken. Yeah. Yeah, but also in a in a very positive way, yeah. you know, yeah. and like like, oh, is this possible? You know, so maybe there is more than only believing. Now, after having after having it experienced, then you don't be, believe it anymore. You don't need to believe because you you now know that these things are possible. So. For me, it was really a big thing. Now I'm really awaiting that she will be released. When I went to the to the vet on Friday, she said, yeah, maybe, but allow her to die in a natural way. So I only give her some painkiller, although I'm not really sure if she has pain, but I want to make sure that she's not suffering too much. And when I come near and she's almost... I think she's dead. Come near, call her name, and I stroke her a little bit. There is a little movement of the of the ears and things like that. So that's a little bit intuition too, to know, try to know if I can touch, if I can come near and things like that. But I heard another interesting topic now with Beatrice, the importance of rituals. This would be a very good topic because the intuition, we, I would love to continue also with Christine uh, because she, it was her moment when we brought up the topic and she is not here because she has um, is on a retreat somewhere. So what do you think about the importance of rituals? I once thought it's it's really all rubbish, you know, what they do in the Catholic Church with this and you know and all these things. But I have changed my mind. I mean, <laughs> I think rituals are important. Actually, on also a bit uh, due to the integral gatherings, when there were all these uh, uh, exercises and rituals, and I felt the power. Uh, uh, Gertraud, for instance, in, in Budapest, not Budapest, in, in Shiofok, no, when we did the fire dance and all these things. So, wow. I Heidi, I'm so, I'm so yeah. curious. What is the... <laughs> <laughs> the thing you said in the Catholic, you said that... Yeah, when I mean, are you referring these, to... Uh, I don't know what Rosario, these, uh, these. Uh, oh, oh, the mumbling through the rosary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it does sound like that sometimes. <laughs> uh, your Mother's Day was mentioned, and this is also a ritual. And uh, I'm still exhausted from yesterday's celebrations. Uh, not so much uh, to be the center of attention, which I wasn't because my daughter is the mother, I'm the grandmother, but uh, being talked to from 11 in the morning at brunch to seven o'clock at the evening, I was just not used to that. I was really exhausted. So maybe rituals are very important when you are young, but when you get old, I wonder, this is was just is the idea that came to me now. Uh, yeah. So far, my contribution to rituals. Yeah, and let me ask you: Is uh, being together with a family for this day? Is this? It's. I wouldn't call that a ritual. Maybe coming together, but not as eight hours of chatting. I mean, what is a ritual? Do we, do we want to to define it a moment? Mm -hmm. What do you understand what a ritual is? Well, the gathering was a ritual because otherwise we wouldn't have gathered mm -hmm. all of us, which is quite a lot. I mean, yeah. Um, well, I guess the, the ritual of uh, a graduation 
when you are presented with a document or you throw the hats into the air as they do in the States. Um, yeah, maybe I'm not really a sucker for rituals, but <laughs> that's my, uh, all my life I tried sort of to play it down. But you also have the ritual of a wedding and of christening of children or circumcision of the poor Jewish boys. So, um, yeah. And bar mitzvah, when they are just don't have any voice to talk or to sing and they have to talk and to sing as a ritual. So rituals are quite challenging sometimes also, I feel. I think, I've thought a lot about ritual and some of this had to do with my thesis and a lot of conversations I have. I think there's certainly there's a lot of the, yeah there's big life transition rituals, but I think there's also there's tiny rituals, you know, what do you do, what do you personally do when you get up every morning. I know I always go and wash my face and it doesn't matter where I am or what time it is or whatever the context, I always wash my face in the morning. Um, and that's a sort of ritual and it, or it can be, maybe I'll put it that way, it can be a ritual. And for me, I think ritual has to do with intentionality and being present and yeah, taking an action with intentionality. And sometimes it, it's a repetition and sometimes it is a singular special event you know, because it's a singular transition, but, or, or taking it, a, a, um, you know, some people say, you know, grace before a meal. Some people don't, some people just, but some people, I know some people who just pause before they start the meal to just settle in, take a breath and then enjoy the meal, you know, and that could be a ritual. I don't know. I think, I think rituals can also be tiny and significant. For me, a ritual is normally Sunday morning to go in our archaeological park where to go down to the river where I went very often with um, Mark and come back and then sit in the, cup, in the cafe there and have a cappuccino with un cornetto con la panna with cream. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is, uh, I couldn't do it yesterday because my car is broken, but <laughs> that's for me is my Sunday ritual. Or having a tea uh, uh, as an interruption of the morning and in the afternoon, this could be a ritual. And the other sort of ritual, which I was talking to Gertrud, when we were in, uh, in, in Hungary and the, the big fire and the shamanic uh, woman did the, the introduction, no? and then everybody was dancing around and yeah, with the drums and so on. It was a strong ritual. Or the other one in um, the, the circle, I don't remember, uh, the church somewhere in the mountains where we went, but maybe you were not there. It was the... the um, journey afterwards after the the conference yeah, kind of constellations are uh, in hungary are also ritual also yeah. like yeah. they they do it every time at least they did it when i was there mm -hmm. and and that was really a big like that's what we do on thursday evening mm -hmm. um yeah so, so what we see that of people that there are different sorts of rituals no and we cannot say a ritual is this, but very different qualities. And what is your idea, Hanneli? I also, for me, it's it's events that, and it, like you say, it's different. It can be, and, and even you mentioned it, Beatrice, it can be, uh, it doesn't need to be long things or things that's every time the same. But for me, the difference is when it comes out of our hearts. But we don't do just as because it's routine or it's imposed upon us. But it's something that really has meaning for us when we do something. Now, there are many kinds, like full moon rituals and new moon rituals. And like you say, for me, nature as well. My, my, my weekend and my daily walks in nature is for me a ritual, just to connect with life itself. 
So it's not an official ritual, but it's for me a ritual. And I know I also had resistance for, for imposed rituals where it's not something where I have a choice or I, I'm just part of it and I'm not really want to be there, want to be part of it. Um, but I, it was very, very interesting that we speak about this because I just recorded the, record the podcast and I actually shared two little rituals in there with the people. Um, so it was wonderful because the one was the medicine wheel where you just create a circle around yourself and then you enter from the, and then you put the locations like north, east, west, and south. And then you enter the circle once you've drawn it you now in, in your imagination around yourself. You enter from the self and then you start asking yourself questions as you move along in the circle, which is, you know, which helps you to, in this sense, it was to, how can we really transform our scars into stars? But it's a very short thing. It's very simple and very short. So it's guided, but it's not a long, it's not a long thing. And at the same time, I did another little ritual as part of it as well. But it's always for me up to the individual then if they want to participate who's listening to it. You know, there's free will for them if they want to participate, do it actually to follow the guidance. Um, it's very rich to have to do things together. Like you talk about the dance, sacred dancing, what doesn't matter what it is, even when it's singing in a, in a choir, uh, it's our own perception of it. But I think it's very rich, it can be very rich and it has its place. It doesn't need to be official. Even my spiritual practices for me is a ritual in the morning. It's like you say, Beatrice, you said when you wake up, you go and wash your face. So I have a whole creative ritual which I go through every morning. Doesn't matter where I am, you can refer to that also as a ritual. So any practice that we actually bring into our experience. But I think what's busy happening in the world, if I look on at some of the online things as well, more and more people are bringing it in in a very simplistic way, some kind of ritual or experience to introduce the process to people. And people, even in the business world, um, are doing it too. And that for me is quite enlightening that they are open to things like that suddenly. But before, maybe 10 years ago, they would have never done it or they wouldn't have been open to it. So I think it's how we, it's introduced and um, our own value that we put on that in our own experience and our willingness to go into it and to explore something new if it's new to us. For me, there's a difference. I mean, ritual is like uh, Beatrice uh, explained it in, in, yeah, almost like a definition. Um, and uh, Hanali, you, you said between it, is it coming from the heart involuntarily or is it imposed and it has to be this way? And I'm coming from a very Catholic family. I was in a boarding, in a nun's boarding school for five years. So it was like all kinds of rituals. You have to do it a certain way and you have to be... Um, for the mess and uh, or what, what do you call it for the service um and 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 there are all kinds of rituals and so i could really distinguish when i feel safe when i really and i think that that's one one of the the yeah to to create a belonging and to create a safe space in which i know that I'm belonging and that I'm, I know what the ritual is. So we do it over and over again. And so I feel, I feel safe and belong. So that, that's something. And if I do it for myself, it, it's also creating a, like last year when my brother got so sick or at least the diagnosis, then I was really meditating each and every day for 100 days. And he, I just talked to him yesterday. And I mean, a year ago, I wouldn't know if he would survive the year. So, so to, to, to create something that is of value for me, um, yeah. And, 
there's also some safety in the in the in the imposed rituals for the group, but for the individuals can be very stren strenuous and and even tormenting sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so that's at least how I, I got it. So today I choose my rituals and for example, a ritual with my 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 daughters, I mean I was like so flabbergasted because there is a tradition that you come back to your your parents' house as long as you don't have children yourself. So for Christmas. And just when they were here for Easter, they, they were talking about how can we do that, that, that we still be together in Christmas, because that's very important for them, even if they have their babies and, and their family of their, their own. So, so there are some rituals that people love to come back to. I, I think go, it's, oh, oh go yeah. ahead. No, I, I was, was saying, I wanted to ask your mother and also then as a second question, if you want to talk about it, what are they for the rituals? What, what, what use uh, do we attribute to them or do they have in, in themselves a meaning or a, a purpose or do we give it? give them a purpose. But I wanted to ask uh, Victoria, she hasn't said anything about what she thinks about rituals. Maybe when you break up, you, you go off camera. We will see how it works. Okay, let me know. Um, it seems okay for right now. Um, so I, I can actually uh, move into the next question <laughs> at the same time. Because what I was going to say at the beginning was that um, was in fact that that I think the importance of rituals. I mean, it depends on the the, the level of the ritual. We have all kinds of little um, before meals. We sing a, a particular blessing, and we um, we always you know say prost with our coffee or tea or water. It's I mean we have certain things that we do just because it's like a family thing. And it's just for fun. And um, if we have chocolates, we always cut them in each chocolate into as many pieces as there are people at the table so that we can try all the different chocolates, you know, things like that, that are just um, rituals like children would have their little private family things. But I, what I was going to say that's much more serious is that um, not being allowed to say goodbye to my friend when she was dying a few weeks ago, um, has been devastating and I'm I'm the grief is much more complicated and it and it keeps haunting me more than than usual because I couldn't have closure so the not that saying goodbye to her would be a ritual but but even I think um my feeling of urgency I got a lot of criticism from people that in every case when my husband died when my mother died when my father died um I had to have a service immediately, like as quickly as I could organize it. No time even to send out invitations. I just sent out word of mouth emails and phone calls and said, please spread the word to this group or that group because it was an urgency for me to, to have closure, to process, to not just sort of sink into the grief in a kind of hopeless way, but to to do something as a celebration, to honor the life of the person I loved and to allow other people to do that too, to, to come in. And so, so people wouldn't have to wait. So that's almost anti-ritual because all the funerals I've been to, you know, so, some are so, they're not even funerals anymore. They're just memorials because it's so long after the person died because they want the, the perfect reception the per they want the right person to say the right speech and this and that and they have to get the building and maybe they have to wait um so so i think sometimes a ritual can be too stiff and then it doesn't serve its purpose because i think the purpose of the ritual is 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 the passage and the emotional processing except for the fun ones which are just i think the fun ones have a purpose in the sense that they, if there's a kind of it, intimacy, it's like a kozanama um, or, or a, 
what nickname yeah <laughs> so i went into the um where you have your like your little family secrets your little quirks and that that's a kind of intimacy and a kind of endearment so that has a purpose too in, in sort of the bonding making the bondings more special but um but right now i'm today i today is the anniversary of my wedding with my husband and I didn't realize it consciously, but I woke up really, really depressed this morning and felt like my heart had just sort of like fallen out of my body. And then only a few hours later, when I looked at the calendar, I realized what day it is today. So that shows again, the rich, how, how rituals are important, like to now to, to even to honor him and our marriage by just acknowledging it, that the anniversary has a significance. It's not just a day, any old day that you do something. It's a way to, again, to provide a kind of container and a closure. So it doesn't, it's not so painful. I don't know. That's the way I see it. I love what you shared, Victoria, about the anti <laughs> ritual. Also, by breaking the tradition, like, it made me th think back of my mom's passing two years ago during COVID. And if I have to look at the process with, that I did because I couldn't be with her, but I was aware she was busy passing, it can also be seen as ritual, but it was very spontaneous, it wasn't thought out. But then afterwards as well, we did something completely different in the family that I didn't expect. We celebrated her death and it wasn't a funeral. Even months after it, she passed, we did it together, my brother and my other siblings and some other family and friends. And it was most beautiful and it was wonderful how everybody just came together and they didn't, um, you know, they, they just went into the process of celebrating. So we were having a lunch and we had a wonderful celebration of telling quirks about her life. So there was no tears at that, at that event or anything like that. It was really celebratory. Celebrating her life rather than, you know, the grief part. Not to say that the grief part's bad, but it was just against tradition. It wasn't usually done like that in other parts of the family. But what you were also sharing, both you and Heidi, made me, reminded me of um, some rituals that I've done spontaneously with some family members who had cancer or ready to die. And to take them through a little ritual they can make peace that they can that, that they can that they actually can cross over peacefully and both of them died that same day after i've done it but it was very spontaneous it wasn't something that was planned and i do believe we can do it for animals too and it, it provides the closure as well as give that per person sort of permission that they can go because of there's other family members that might want to help them back and the likes so I think there's a place for that too. And it's always sacred, no matter what we do. And even the, even the lighthearted ones and the fun ones. I, when my daughter and I, we have this thing of IT. So we, we uh, on specific, just for surprises, it's not even a special day. We have a high tea and we just be together and we have these beautiful things to eat and drink tea together. And it's always beautifully decorated which is very special. So I think it has a place in different ways. It doesn't need to be official, structured, or even planned. Um, I think when I think back of us in 2020, in Women Matters, we had many rituals going on at that time with some of the experiences we did together. We can perceive it as a ritual. Um, so there is always meaning and purpose behind it, but according to the individual. Um, I was just wondering because every time around this time of the year, every year I go to Shumbrum Palace and the Chinese Wisteria, I think it's pronounced this way, this beautiful smelling uh, bloom around this time of the year. And I go there 
I never thought of it as a ritual and I don't know what I would celebrate with it, but I do it. And it's just to celebrate beauty maybe, or yeah. And I was there last weekend, it was just beautiful. And not hardly any tourists that made it twice as nice. <laughs> I was just wondering, um, today is um, capitulation, um, 1945, and the, yeah, the victory over Nazi Deutschland. And um, for Russia, it's really a remarkable but day and that is a ritual to have all the the weapons and all the soldiers out there on the right um, place and yeah so it it's kind of uh I, I was just thinking so there there's so many nations have their rituals for specific dates and and this is so remarkable because what is being celebrated is worth celebrating. But what they use it for now, today, and the speech, that, that is something completely different. And, and, and so there's something like how can rituals also for gang members or for, I don't know, any... Burschenschaften, I don't know what the, <laughs> so like uh, college people, how can they be used for certain purposes to not, not to, not so much to create safe space, but to, to make a statement um, about manlyhood or I don't know what, what that might be, but they they can be to impose something on people. So to yeah, or a certain message, a certain way of behaving, a certain way of politics or whatever that might be. Hi Christine. Hi Christine. We were waiting for you for the intuition next time. And um, so we're talking about rituals today. You are muted. You're muted, Christine. I apologize. I'll just tell you where I am and why I'm all mixed up. <laughs> I've gone to a, a like a health clinic just to kind of rebalance myself because I was sort of wacky <laughs> with my hormones, thyroid imbalances. And I just arrived late yesterday and I'm just I'm my in a new time zone and my whole schedule got wacky. But anyway, I'm here and would love to listen to where you all are. Thank you. Wonderful that you are here. We changed over to the meaning and the possibilities of rituals. And we came now uh, to the, Gertrude uh, mentioned that um, rituals can also be used not only in a good way, but also in a not so good way. And I was, my, in, my association came, one ritual is also uh, make soldiers sing, abuse music. For, for keeping them in spirit and in, in, mm. in also, it, 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 music can be used as propaganda in this case, yeah. so that they go and fight, you know, with uh, these um, songs. So this is also a ritual and not a very good one. <laughs> Interesting, fascinating thought. Yes, I can. I can feel the power of what you just said. Thank you for bringing me up to where you are. Thank you. Uh, Gertraud, could you once again show what you showed us in the beginning about the group and the turtles? Because I was thinking about Christine at that moment. <laughs> Oh. 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 Oh, that's wonderful. 
so they all they push her and um, she can swim again. <laughs> the group uh, pushes the turtle. Yeah. Oh, that's so dear. <laughs> More arrive. <laughs> Oh my, I've never seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> this is co-creativity, co-collaboration and real uh, community, I would say. When that's somebody cool. is in trouble yeah. that all the others come and help. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Gertrude. Thank, thank, you. Gertrude. thank you for asking for oh. that. Monia and Gertrude for putting it up. Thank you. That makes me very happy. <laughs> Gertrude, um, I, I have a, a very close friend who, who has raised turtles and saved many animals over the years. Can, can you send that to me somehow, a link after by email or put it in the chat or whatever? This is on LinkedIn. I couldn't, I couldn't uh, take it out. So do you have a LinkedIn? Uh, oh, I have LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. You can send it by LinkedIn. Thanks. Yeah. And you will see it then in the recording of this. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's a good idea. Thanks. Victoria. I was going to say, um, to, to the, to the question of what's, you know, one of the many purposes of ritual is community connection or connection to another person and i think that that video just just made me think that too of of you know having the rituals to help support each other having the rituals to connect or i mean even you know every time we have this meeting we do our check in and our check out and that is a ritual and that helps us center into the space and separate in some ways ritual can also be separation from something else you know separating from whatever our life is outside of the zoom meeting and taking this intentional space and creating the space and say here we are and then closing that out and saying okay now i'm returning to this other space but but as a as a doorway or as a container or something like that so anyway thank you for that video i love that <laughs> yeah and it's also what you said to to do that uh, graduation ceremony brings closure that's a ritual of, sure um so and it helps to close things also yeah and what's interesting about that i mean that's also kind of like what my mother was saying about not getting to say goodbye sometimes we don't realize how important a ritual is until we don't have it. Um, I've never, I've never really cared that much about graduations. Um, I participated participated in, you know, my high school graduation, my college graduation, but it was never something that I. A lot of people get very excited or put a lot of meaning to it, and for me, it was never. It was just something that, oh, I, this is the thing that you're supposed to do. And it was still fun and still good, but it, it, it never, I never had a personal feeling about it, but I really noticed not having it after my master's degree. Mm -hmm. And, and I've really noticed these past two years, how, how fuzzy it feels, you know, that I got a degree, but, but also because it was in the pen you know the height of the pandemic and everything else going on and everything time felt blurry but yeah it's it's, in, it's so interesting that that sometimes we take it for granted but then when we don't have the thing we realize actually what it was doing all along We actually have three turtles. No, two tortoise and one turtle. Yeah. <laughs> so I could really resonate with that. <laughs> so I guess we go to the other ritual now of the closing out ritual. Talking about rituals with a ritual. <laughs> who wants to start the ritual you might take some 
I don't know. No, you can't see that. I wanted to put a candle on to make it a little sacred, but I don't get it in the, so quickly. Actually, you mentioning the candle, Heidi, made me think of um, Thich Nhat Hanh when I um, went to a retreat with him. It's uh, in his his uh, the monastery that he founded here in California. Every fifteen minutes for the whole, well, I don't know what they did in the middle of the night because um, we we drove home at night because there was no space to stay there, but. Um, but certainly from dawn till dusk, maybe later, every 15 minutes, the huge gong would be rung. And um, at first I thought, how peculiar, like it's not, you know, it makes it like a train station or something, you know, I mean, why? Or a cuckoo clock, like why? Because I, I thought the whole point of Buddhism is this, you know, eternity and the timelessness and being in the moment. And I thought, what a strange you know because it seemed like this rude interruption and then when he gave his talks I realized that, that the whole purpose of it was that wherever you are and and you 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 know you you lose your mindfulness and your intentionality as Beatrice was talking about intention it brings you back and of course the the monastics in the Christian tradition um, you know they pray seven times a day apparently because St. Benedict said, you know, within three hours, you're bound to either, you know, upset your fellow monks or have a, have a wicked thought or be, you know, distracted from your task. So it's a way to bring you back, bring you back, bring you back. And so um, anyway, I, that's, <laughs> that's my strange closing thing, but, um, but I, I love that idea of just, and, and Thich Nhat Hanh also said, he said, you know, when you're out, out and about in the real world um well he didn't say the real world um if you're driving and you're at a red light instead of cursing the red light and saying oh i'm going to be late like monio was mentioning the the white rabbit <laughs> instead of that say ah this red light is an opportunity for mindfulness this is a bell for me and then it becomes this beautiful thing and he said if the telephone rings let it ring a few times and say ah the bell of mindfulness before you answer the phone so um I think it, that fits in nicely with ritual and also with, with that sort of intent that we live with intentionality and with mindfulness. Mm. That's lovely. Really lovely. Yeah. Uh, when we are finished here, I will go and there's another ritual and I never thought about it as a ritual because ever since the war started in Ukraine, we are lighting a candle at night that burns throughout the night. And yeah, and this sort of is what I'm going to do tonight as well. And we used to uh, light candles to remember those who died during the war and so I don't know these people, but uh, we still light a candle, my husband and I. And I wonder if he thought of it because it's dark outside already, but I'm sure he will. That's my check. Mm -hmm. That's really beautiful, thank you. My daughter and I, on every Monday morning, we do a little meditation together via Zoom if we're not close to each other. And even if we're present with each other, we do it on a Monday. And this morning's one was most beautiful. So I will go and do that meditation again. It's a guided meditation. It, and it's just every week, it's, um, you know, it's just amazing. The woman who leads this, her voice and the space that she takes you, and I'll go and do that afterwards. Thank you, I'm complete. I would like to know how you are, Christine. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and uh, my takeaway from today is um, more a question like, what are my precious rituals I don't want to miss? And what am I participating even though I don't want to or just do it because <laughs> uh, and that I could like let go. Yeah, they, these are my main questions and maybe there are some rituals coming up like you said, Monia. I didn't know that it was one <laughs> and now I'm, I'm seeing it. And I was just thinking of a, of a paper I wrote in the second week of the war that I might send to you. Yeah. Oh, by the way, when will we meet again? Let's, Let's talk after finishing uh, about that. Hmm? Christine, do you want to answer the question of Gertraud? Sure, thank you for asking, Gertrude. About oh, maybe six weeks ago, I was diagnosed with a thyroid imbalance called Hashimoto's. Yeah, it's, it throws your, your body's rhythms into extremes. And, um, and I've got a really great, MD who's helping me with it. I feel like it's better. And also I think just getting away to this wonderful place. It's a nonprofit, so it's not that expensive. It's in Austin, Texas, in the countryside. And um, it's just a place where you can go and mainly do- um, Christine, you're making some noise. Um, that's pretty much over the microphone. Oh. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Did you hear me before? Okay, so you heard me before. Um, I'm propped up in my bed with my little <laughs> robe on. So, um, okay, so where was I? So I decided to come here just to really stabilize things because it was getting better and I wanted it to get grounded. So um, we're mainly, it's a very, it's a vegan juice setup. Everything is raw and many of the days are just, you only have juices. I just feel like my body wanted that. I've been here many times before, but it's been over 10 years. So it's like coming for the first time. And um, I apologize for my imbalances that you certainly could sense and feel. <laughs> and I feel like I'm coming home in a sweet way. Sometimes you appreciate um, what you do have when you don't have it. <laughs> So yeah, and one of the things I love about this place, I mean, there, there are only like 15 guests and um, we have a ritual before every meal, we gather together and for a meal, I mean, we're getting our juice or whatever. And um, just there's a moment of gratitude and someone says a prayer and they open a book, but somebody has to pick the page. I want page 17, so you never know what the prayer might be. And it's just a lovely, um, non-cerebral experience it's just touching yeah. so thank you for asking all is well <laughs> yeah and uh, I'm so, thank you victoria i just didn't have it on my calendar i got whacked out with my schedule when i made the commitment to come here so you brought me in thank you dear friend thank you <laughs> makes me happy so yeah i think just the ritual of us being together is fabulous I've spoken. I think I'm the only one who hasn't checked out besides Heidi. Um, I don't know. I'm just so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be with this group. Um, there was a several months there where I, where I couldn't attend and it's so wonderful to have this back in my life with regularity. So thank you. And I am going to think a lot about rituals <laughs> this week and notice what what rituals I have um, in my life and 
and make space for for rituals I want to make space for. I really, Gertrude, I Gertrude, I really loved your um, questions about what am I participating in that I don't want to participate in, and also what is precious to me, and what what should I make space for ritual to honor or to hold. So I'm going to sit with those. Thank you all for for the beautiful space, and I'm so glad you're here, Christine. Thank you, and I'm so glad you told me those questions. Yeah, it was good, very good to, to have those here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everybody also for this intuitive topic change, which I found really, really very fruitful because also for me, I mean, I was never thinking in this way about ritual and now I, I need to think much more about it and also why I was so against rituals a long time of my life I found them ugh, nothing what what is it stupid and so on you know so I think it's a very important thing to think about it and how many rituals do we have which we are not even aware of no so and I also love uh, Gertraud your question the rituals we are living which might not be the ones we want to live. You know? So to, to figure out where we should uh, get rid of certain rituals and maybe in, introduce others. <laughs> so I thank you very, very much for that. And maybe we continue with the same thing. We will see. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. And what time do we meet next time? <laughs>